you made it! Finally, your speech and language therapy appointment is in the diary and you're due any day now to meet your therapist. So perhaps you're wondering what to expect. Maybe you're wondering how you can get the most out of your appointment, how you can help your child prepare for this appointment. Well, don't worry guys, I have you covered. Bryony Rust here, speech and language therapist at Salt by the Sea, and in this video I'm going to share with you what to expect at your child's first speech and language therapy appointment, some of the main elements that all therapy assessments involve, and also what you can do to help you and your child prepare. Let's get to it. Now, all of us speeches have our core things that we aim to achieve in an initial appointment. All of those things that were drilled into us at university and on student placements all those years ago. We want to assess your child's skills, we want to get an idea of their case history, and we want to get an idea of what further support they may need, a bit of a plan for the future. And we want to involve you in all aspects of that process. But we're also individuals and we all bring our own personality, our own style and approach to achieving those core aims within a therapy session. And also the focus of an initial appointment may vary depending on why you've come for that session, on what your child's main needs are. Regardless of the reason why you've come for an assessment, we want to put your child at ease. All of us communicate differently depending on how comfortable we feel. So we want to get the most out of your child, put them in a position where they can really demonstrate their skills so that we can also make a fair summation of what they need help with. So the beginning of a session often looks quite informal while we help a child to settle in. So sometimes I might start by having a play with a child and avoiding asking any direct questions just so that they can feel comfortable, not feel on the spot. Sometimes a session might start with just having a chat with the parent, leaving the child in peace just to get familiar and comfortable in the space. So that really depends on your child's personality, the therapist who you're seeing, and kind of judging it within that moment to make sure that we can get the most out of your child. Now communication is in pretty much everything. So from the moment your child walks through the door, I'm starting to build up a picture of their skills and I'm starting to kind of add things to my mental picture of all of those different aspects of communication that I'm thinking about and likely scribbling down furiously as well. I'm noticing what your child's paying attention to, how they're exploring the toys, how they're interacting with the people in the room. I'm thinking about how they're communicating, the variety of ways that they might be doing that. I'm thinking about what their understanding is like, what their speech clarity is like. I'm thinking about these things and a whole lot more. And we can get a lot of this information initially just by playing together and quietly observing. Hey, we're professionals. So if it feels unstructured or informal, this is intentional. We want to start by getting your child to feel comfortable, confident, calm, so that then they can feel a bit more sure of themselves as we move on to perhaps some more structured tasks or assessments. So with all of that said, even if a session looks quite informal, most initial appointments will include these three elements. Element number one is play and chit chat. So we're making your child feel at ease and calm, we're doing some informal play, and we might start building up to some more structured activities and tasks. It might involve some specific questions directed to your child or to you, and all of it is simply gathering information about what your child's up to, how they're communicating, and how we can support them with this. And it always involves taking copious notes as well, scribbled down, that will then be used to type up our formal case notes after the appointment to form a useful record of what your child was doing in that session. You can help by reassuring your child, by being relaxed, trusting the process, and by all means ask your therapist, would it be helpful if I join in and play with you or shall I stand back? Have a chat with them. The second element is a case history. This is where we gather information about your child's development. We might talk about their early milestones, we might talk about specific examples of things out and about that they're currently finding challenging or difficult. You can help by sharing those examples, your own observations and perspectives of how they're doing in everyday situations. Speech and language therapy is absolutely a team effort and what you bring to the picture is hugely valuable and helps inform our picture and our plan for the future. 
Which brings me to the third and final element, which is a plan for the future. You should leave that appointment with an idea of what's going to happen next, what your therapist is going to do next, and also perhaps any suggestions that your therapist made about things that you can try at home, what you might want to have a go at doing. If you feel unsure about any of this, it's well worth speaking up. Ask your questions, raise your concerns. If something doesn't make sense or you're not quite sure about it, do speak up. I love it when parents ask me questions or ask those kind of tricky things because it means that we have that opportunity to, from the very beginning, make sure that we are on the same page, that we understand each other well and we have a good, clear idea of a future plan. Because speech and language therapy is absolutely a team effort. I think I said that already. I'll probably say it again. So we've thought about the main elements that are typically involved in initial speech and language therapy appointment for a child, but how can you prepare and how can you help your child prepare? Well, the main thing from my perspective is to avoid putting any pressure on your child to talk in that appointment. And sometimes that's hard because you want to get the most out of the appointment. You want your speech therapist to get a good impression of what your child is doing and how they're communicating. But I find that ultimately we get more from your child if you say something like, we're gonna go and see someone who is going to have a bit of a play with us. We might explore their toys and books. Mummy might have a chat with them, any of those kind of things. Because don't worry, we're professionals. You can trust that we will be able to get the most out of your child within that appointment. And usually the best way is to reassure them that we're not going to put them on the spot. We're not going to demand that they do any talking. It all just naturally flows because we start by focusing on putting your child at ease. If you think your child might be a bit unsure about coming, then get in touch with the therapist first and share this with them just so that they can be prepared. You might like to share with them some particular toys or activities that they particularly enjoy just for them to be really motivated in the session. You might like to bring some of those things with you, perhaps a box of your child's favorite toys or even some pictures of some of your favorite places. You might like to involve your child in choosing what are the things that we're going to go and share with the therapist. That's it for now. Remember, speech and language therapy is absolutely a team effort. The perspectives, observations, ideas that you bring to the table is a hugely valuable part of it. So don't be afraid to pipe up with any questions or ideas that you have and get that conversation going between you and the therapist and your child as well. If you liked this video, please give it a lovely big thumbs up and subscribe for new videos every week all about supporting your child's communication and involving you in the process. And if you would like to know a little bit more about what is that mental map of communication skills that is running through my head in an initial appointment, then head on over to saltbythesea.com where you can get my free communication guide. Thank you for watching. Maybe share this with a friend. Someone might find it useful. I'll see you later.